It's because it's something, first of all, they experienced in their childhood that moved them. And I had lunch with Fred Rogers once, Fred Rogers' neighborhood, and a, and a young lady came up and saw Fred begin to weep, tears. Uh, the memories that are brought back, the good ones. And I had, it happened to me once in a restaurant. A waitress came up and burst into tears because of the memories that, uh, that she had of Mary Poppins. I think it, unfortunately, not that many movies that, that have that effect or even intend to. But uh, Walt had that, that gift of uh, getting to people where they live. Just amazing. He uh, didn't seem to have any means of supporting himself, and yet he was happy. He was always happy, and he, everything he did, uh, actually the character was based on a number of characters out of, the, out of the book, and they were all rolled into one. So he was chimney sweep and a street a scrivener and all those things. I just liked him because he seemed to just enjoy it every minute of life. Probably my work with Disney, more than anything else. Uh, it really left a legacy. I get, this is, what, 50, 50 years? And I'm getting fan mail from children who just were just introduced to Mary Poppins. I think that's something to be proud of. I'm really proud of having worked with Walt. One of my favorite things to do when I was dressed up as uh, Mr. Dawes, which was like, three hours in makeup. Every day at lunchtime, they had these trams full of tourists, you know, that toured around the studio. I would wait till one came, standing by the road. They'd always stop for me, and I'd say, thank you, and I'd creep across the street. And then as they drove off, I would pass them as fast as I could run. <laughs> at a dead sprint. Did it every day. I said, How many times have I seen Mary Poppins? I don't know, endless numbers of time, with grandkids, with other people's kids. I haven't seen it in a theater, but I, I, we run it once in a while, especially for a kid who's never seen it. Walt Disney was a big kid. For one, He was a comfortable old shoe of a personality, but he really was still a child at heart. We used to say we were both children looking for our inner adult. <laughs> the most powerful thing is the music. The music has so much to say. And the whole movie is about kindness and, and about love. But it's done in such a, a wonderful, subtle way. I think kids remember it. I have people start to weep when they tell me the effect it had on them as children. And I, th I think for that reason, that movie will be around for a long time. What was probably some of the most fun I've ever had, it was hard work, but it was one of the handful of projects I was ever in that we felt something magical was happening. Every day, we couldn't wait to get at it. There was just about, we said, this is going to be something magical, and it was. Can I spell supercalifragilistic? I can even say it. I can't, you know, Julie could say it backwards. I never learned to do that. S U P E R C A L. That's as far as I get. Supercala. F R A G I L I S T I C. I can't do it. I can't spell it. I'm so glad that they've kept in this archive all the props and all the, uh, the wonderful memories from Disney. I think everybody's childhood is, is in, in this archive here. All my memories. I was raised on Walt Disney, and uh, especially Pinocchio, my favorite. And I, I think this should be a place they could visit and see. I did. <laughs> Dick and Bob were two opposite personalities. Bob was quite serious and uh, somber, and Dick was uh, happy-go-lucky and always optimistic. And somehow that combination, it, 
uh, the deeper feelings came from Bob, but the, the happiness, the, you know, the joy, and it came from Dick. I think that was the reason that it worked so well between the two of them. Oh, I think probably my striped jacket from uh, Super Cal Fragilistic and, and uh, Jolly Holiday. That striped jacket, oh, I wish I had that. <laughs>